Hey there friends, Jeff Fritz here, and I'm back with another interview for .NET Conf 2019. And this time, I'm joined by Matthias from The Cake Project. Hey Ma there, Matthias, how's it going? I don't it's going great. Oh my gosh. What do you think of .NET Conf 2019 and .NET Core 3 being released? I think that, again, that looks really solid. It's so much nice. It's both the, like the new product things, but it's so much community content too, and that's something I really like. Oh, uh, yeah. When, when a community steps up. And speaking of community, that the Cake project community out there, you've got a lot of folks that are contributing and that are using Cake for their projects. There must have been a, a number of changes you had to make to keep up with .NET Core 3. Yeah, because we've been since .NET 1.0. Uh, so we've been through the product JSON and the CS Pro merges and everything. So, I mean, being a tool, uh, you probably notice it more than the end user does because the Visual Studio team has done often a great job with the end user experience. But when you're part of the build pipeline, you you notice some pain, especially mm. in, in the beginning with Dot 1.0, it was very limited on what you can do. Uh, 2.0, it got a little bit better, and 3.0, it's basically a lot of work that we had to do before, we don't need to do anymore. So it's a little, if we import it today, it would be a lot easier. But we have gone through the whole journey since essentially that project K when it was before one hour. So oh my gosh, yes. It's, it's, it's been a, a journey, but also like it's been nice because you learned a lot about uh, the internals of it and things like that. And that's fun, I think. Oh my me. gosh, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing that you and your team, the other folks that contribute, you've seen all the internals of how the build process works, how to integrate with the compilers and things. Is there anything that during that, that, evolution process as you as you've gone through all the versions of .NET Core here is there anything that sticks out to you as as a particular um, interesting migration that you had to make well I think in the beginning it was all like they went to the whole buffet of packages in mm -hmm. the beginning so it was and also with the tools you had everything every action was intent behind so it was restore was one thing and build was one thing and it's more become more like you only need the framework now. So it's more sure. like the regular framework. And uh, now the build will do an implicit restore and things like that. So they have uh, like evolved um, what the users need. So it's more convenient now in one way uh, to something. So it's more like it just works, I think, with especially if you go with new things with where you get VPF and uh, Windows Forms. Uh, that's been uh, really nice to see that kind of development because then there's nothing holding you back. Oh uh, yeah, to go into jumping ship to the new core. So, and and when I think about about Cake with .NET Core and WinForms, is that all compatible? Can I use Cake to build my Windows Forms .NET Core applications? Yeah, so essentially, Cake is a build orchestration tool. So it doesn't like replace your tools; it orchestrates them. So mm -hmm. you can you still use your X unit or N unit MS Build or .NET CLI or whatever you want or NuGet EXE. Uh, what Cake does is that it does uh, a build script which you write in C sharp, and we utilize the Roslyn compiler. So one advantage is that each time you release a new Roslyn compiler, we also get many of those features. Uh, so we'll we're actually working on our .NET Core 3 port now. So we will uh, soon after when it's released, uh, we will support the full uh, C sharp 8 and uh, things like that. So that's kind of nice, but we can piggyback on that kind of evolution. Uh, and still be cross-platform because we still work on Mono, we still work on the desktop framework and uh, and things like that. So it's and that's always a challenge. Usually, if you only support the latest, it's, it's a lot easier. Oh, yeah. uh, then you'll be you like if you just do file new, it will be in a really good place. Uh, and also with .NET Core three, it's almost easy because you can transition. Uh, uh, myself, I transitioned several legacy projects now to go over to .NET Core three. Very yeah, cool. So it's, yeah. Oh, that's great. So for folks out there that want to try Cake, they want to use that to improve their build process, where can they go to learn more? So I think the really good starting point is cakebuild.net, which is our website, uh, where we have a, a couple of, uh, there's uh, some guides and really good documentation where we use the, the YM, which are another uh, .NET open source project to generate uh, API documentation. So that every release is the document site up to date. And now, of course, our GitHub repository, uh, where we have, like, we can raise issues if you have any issues or questions or things like that. Uh, we also have a Gitter chat, which people can join in if they're just, if it's just a question that's 
would be noisy if everyone just the issues. And of course, Stack Overflow is the standard ways we monitor. Very cool. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us, Matthias. I appreciate uh, the information about Cake here for yeah. .NET Conf. All right, Matthias, thanks so much for joining us here for .NET Conf 2019. Thank you for having me. All right. And to the rest of you out there, I hope you have a great rest of your .NET Conf 2019.